Welcome to the Mirror Football Podcast with me, Ian Cruz. Joining me to look ahead to this weekend's fixtures are Daily Mirror reporter Darren Lewis, assistant sports editor Alan McKinley, and 3pm columnist Steve Anglesey. Uh, we'll start with the big game at Old Trafford on Sunday lunchtime. Uh, Darren, Man United, Liverpool, key game, massive game for, for both teams, obviously. More important for United than Liverpool, perhaps? Uh, no, important for both sides. Rafa's under pressure. Riera's come out the left winger and criticised his man management skills. Uh, the only way to actually bounce back from criticism is to win football matches because obviously then uh, nothing else really matters. He's under huge pressure though, and if he loses on Sunday, that pressure will, will only build. As far as uh, United are concerned, I'd say obviously, obviously they need to win the match to go on. Uh, uh, maintaining their, their title charge, I think they will win it. Liverpool traditionally raised their game for matches against Liverpool uh, against Manchester United and going back to being very very average again. I fear I think they will raise their game on Sunday, but I think a Manchester United side spearheaded by Wayne Rooney would be too good for them. Interesting when you say that Liverpool raised their game against United. I mean, I know they've won the last three meetings. Prior to that, the record was was quite patchy in Premier League history terms. Anyway. Um, Alan, I mean, you know, we've talked before about Liverpool being a two, maybe three man team, you include Reina with Torres and Steven Gerrard. Have they got enough about them to stop yeah, well, a, a rampant, you know, yeah, old You have to wonder why every, every time Liverpool play United, they look like a half a team again, don't they? I don't think Rafa's bothered about pressure either, because if the worst does happen, he gets fired, he gets a, a pocket full of money, which will keep him quite happy for the next 20 years. So, on, I think at the weekend, the pressure's off Liverpool a little bit because they've been so bad. And that's when they're at the most dangerous, I think. Steve, as a Man City fan, you may find yourself in the rare position on Sunday of actually wanting the red half of, of the City to win, won't you? To keep, to keep City's I, it, force... I have, actually, I have actually heard people say this, which is, it is quite incredible. Um, it's a vital game, isn't it? I think it really, it, this, this is really key for, for both of these teams now. I mean, it could, this, this really is, this has become Liverpool's cup final now every year, hasn't it? Mm. Which is why they are so up for it. It is, it is quite galling. Mm. There's nothing more galling than going one down at Old Trafford. And, and hearing them sing it one down in your cup final, which is one of their great <laughs> chants, uh, which obviously they sing every, they, they sing every other week. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a, it's a funny one. I still don't think Liverpool will finish fourth. I still don't think City will finish fourth. I still think Tottenham will finish fourth. Um, but this, it, it really could be the end of Benitez, this. I think, you know, this, there, are, there are bad defeats and bad defeats, and I think... You know, they, they could easily get done three or four, I think. Uh, yeah, I think. Darren, just take your reporter's head off for a minute and put your Liverpool fan's head on. I mean, you know, as a Liverpool fan, would victory over Manchester United at the weekend really disguise the problems of this season? I mean, is it time for, for a change in the manager of a hot seat? Yeah, I think it does go beyond bragging rights as far as Liverpool are concerned. Um, out of the uh, FA Cup to Burnley, a pitiful, pitiful display in the Champions League this season. And, uh, you know, we're, listen, even the Europa League, which many people arrogantly thought we'd go into and walk, we're finding is a bit of a minefield as well. So I think as far as the Liverpool dressing room is concerned, Rapinitas' man management skills have left a lot to be desired. His transfer policy has indeed uh, also left a lot to be desired. Lots of left backs, lots of right backs, uh, lots of midfielders. He still, after all the time and all the money he's been there, still relies on a player that he inherited, or two players he inherited, Gerard and uh, Carragher, uh, and Torres, who, listen, the virtual shoe in, and Reina, who you, you'd have to admit is a good buy. Other than that, very, very distinctly lightweight policy in terms of the transfer market. And um, he's alienated. I know he's got a hardcore support inside Merseyside, but you know they have a long tradition of backing their managers. And before we sort of get carried away with the idea that maybe if they lose three or four, they will get sacked on Monday. They've never yeah, ever sacked. No, a manager. sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't mean that. I meant this could be the end for him with those people in Merseyside yeah, who still yeah, stand by support. him. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah. I don't think they would sack him because no. I don't think they can afford to sack well, that's him. The big and, question, and I, and I think. That? I think that they think that he will go somewhere else yeah. in the summer. And anyway, there's this weird the stat, isn't there, that they've never sacked a manager in their 117 year history. Never sacked a manager during the season. During mid season, yeah. Uh, during Didn't the they start Evans? At the end of the season, he quit. Uh, he, he, he didn't. He, they didn't sack him. Anyone who's actually left has either left of their own accord or been sort of ushered out of the door in the summer. Um, 
I, I just think for some time, we've had these podcasts many weeks, and I, I've said for some time, Liverpool are like a life raft just drifting in the ocean. They're not going to finish fourth, regardless of what Rafa says, and regardless of what the most optimistic uh, Liverpool fan says, largely because of the failings that have basically plagued them all season. Defensively, they're all over the place. They don't score enough goals if Torres is not playing. And uh, the, he bought a right back when he should have bought a second striker. So, well, how, so how are going? How are they going to get rid of Benitez? Presumably, that they're hoping that Real Madrid make him an offer. Aren't they? Presumably, they are. But also, they, a lot of people are hoping that the owners take a massive hit uh, and a massive gamble, if you like, and say, "Look, we are going to take the hit on the money that it would cost to sack him, right? About sixteen million pounds." The owners don't strike me as as people who want to spend sixteen million pounds and get nothing for it. No, they don't. But also, they're businessmen, you know, and and for them to have any level of success with Liverpool, they need to be playing at the highest level of English of, of European football. For them to be thrashing around in mid table in the Premier League and not in playing in the Champions League for a club of Liverpool standing is just absolutely disastrous. Well, we reported the news on the back page of the Mirror this morning, we're talking about Torres, that apparently Chelsea fancied him linking up with Drogba in attack next season. I mean, if Torres, if Torres were to leave, that is potentially bringing the whole house of cards in. Because if he goes, Gerard will take a look and think, hang on a minute, what's going on? I mean, Mako, you know, what, what are your thoughts on their, you know, with, moving on to Chelsea as well? I mean, they need to rebuild this summer, Liverpool need to rebuild. You know. if, if Liverpool uh, let Torres leave, then they might as well just pack up the house of cards and. Uh, and quit, you know, because um, Torres is their best chance of doing anything. He's the best. He's the best player in the team, including Gerard. Um, absolutely, cannot afford to lose a player like that. It's, if, if Liverpool have been a, more of a selling club than a, a buying club for a number of years now, anyway. But the, if if they have any ambition whatsoever, then you can, it's no good saying, "Oh, we'll get rid of Torres and then we'll buy an up and coming player," because you've got the finished article right there, and he's still young. And it would be madness for them to let him go. He also madness. wants to stay, doesn't he? Yeah, he does want to stay. He yeah. does obviously feel something for... He has a kinship oh, yeah, with yeah, him. He, he, has he, has right, up, he, is, the, he yeah. is the sort of the genuine boyhood fan, isn't he? Not yeah. the guy who says it was always my dream to yeah. play for Charlton Athletic. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. I think he's got um, the old stuff tattooed on his arm. You'll never <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. He had the, he had the you'll it's never walk alone. That's right. His armband, didn't he? When he was all his mates have got... It's actually will never walk alone. It's a childhood thing, but... They had it tattooed and he had it on the inside of his captain's armband. Mm. So yeah, I mean, he is a genuine fan. He's spoken this week about the need to reinforce. There, there must come a time, Mac is right, he's a young man, he's, I think he's 24, maybe 25, but he's playing for the best team in the world in Spain and he wants to... That's The reason he moved from Atletico Madrid to Liverpool was to play in the Champions League finals mm. and to win titles. Mm. Now, if he can see that that's not going to happen, then he'll move on, won't he, Steve? Well, I would have thought so, yeah. Maybe you'll get a tattoo on the other arm. <laughs> <laughs> what man went to mow, you know. Or the celery song, perhaps. You, never, you just don't know, do you? Um, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, he would, be a, he would be a terrible loss. He is... He's, I mean, he's, he's got a lot of years left. I know, mm. he's, I know he's injury prone, but he's got a lot of years left, hasn't he? I, see- I'm actually thinking... I, I actually think they might have more chance getting Gerrard. Especially if by some miracle... Chelsea, you mean? Chelsea. Especially if by some miracle Benitez did stay. I, th- I actually think Gerard might be a more realistic option for them. And I'll tell you what, they are looking... I know he's... I mean, Gerard is 20... Gerard is 30 as well. Is he 30? I think, I think he's not yeah. far off 29. I mean, well, Chelsea, he, nearly went, he nearly went there once before, didn't he? He did nearly he go nearly there. there twice, but that is the, that's the only thing. I mean... It is his age, isn't it? And they they really do need to to renovate that that middle yeah, of the I mean, field. It's been How, point- you know, Michael Ballack is. It just appears. No, well, it's been it's been pointed out in the in the sort of aftermath of their midweek Champions League defeat by Inter that people have now started to write what we've all known. They are an aging team. They're an aging yeah. squad. They've not rebuilt at all since since Mourinho. No, there. no. You know, they've not had the money to talk about the Bramwich getting his wallet out again this summer. I mean, Macca, they need to rebuild that. Yeah, it's curious, isn't it, that while, while Balak continues to, to feature, while Joe Cole's very much on the outside, there's a young player with a lot of talent. You would imagine somebody like, somebody like Ancelotti would, would see a player with that kind of talent and think, right, we can make you, know, we can make you into the finished article. Um, but that obviously that obviously hasn't happened there. It's interesting what you're saying about Gerard maybe going to Chelsea. I mean, let's face it, Gerard would have gone to Chelsea had it not been for the second half against AC Milan in the European Cup final. Yeah. Those those 45 minutes yeah. have kept him at Liverpool for the next four years, haven't they? So you know, be controversial. Could be I, say, I think there's been a massive overreaction to the other night with Chelsea, 
Um, the kind I agree of with that. I think yeah. that if you look at that Chelsea side, every one of those players would walk into any team in the Premier League and most teams in Europe with a possible couple of exceptions. Nicolas Anelka hasn't gone from being an outstanding striker to being a useless one. Well, he had a poor game. Yeah, I don't think poor game. I don't think anyone's Absolute. suggesting they're useless. Well, well you, just said, you just mentioned the words aging. renovation and ageing team. Yeah. Well, they are an ageing team. But, well, but, 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 every, you, could, you could say the same. Listen, AC Milan, I seem to remember, reached the Champions League final and they were no spring chickens. No. You know, I mean, Ancelotti knows how to get the best out of players regardless of their age. Uh, most... If you're a good player, you look after yourself. You you you, main, you train the right way. You you can. We've seen Arsene Wenger with Tony Adams uh, manage to get a few year, more years out of him uh, and that back four when he went to Arsenal. And I, I, to me, I don't look at Chelsea and think there needs to be major surgery. I don't think anyone disputes the fact that players can go on them. But the, you know, the previous week we watched undoubtedly an ageing AC Milan side get put to the sword by Manchester There comes a time when you can't have a whole team full of 30-somethings, no matter how good your preparation is, your diet, your fitness, etc. Et you have to have some young blood coming through. I mean, let's... And they were, also, they were, they were, who have they got, you know? Well, apart, apart from a second, apart from a second, we said ageing AC Milan, the average age of that side was 28. But that ageing side, that time was not an ageing side. That looked a lot older to me. No, no, I mean, the deployment of the players by Leonardo probably left a lot more to, a lot to be desired. And I think he hasn't got too much longer to live uh, in football in terms at AC Milan. But I think if people, uh, there's just lots and lots of overreaction over the last couple of days. The other thing is that Inter Milan didn't uh, get the credit they are that deserved deserved in one way for, for being such a cynical, horrible team that they are. Now, uh, Inter Milan have always been that kind of team, defensive, the first Catanaccio team in history and all the rest of it. And their, their tactics against Chelsea were deliberately to and cynically to frustrate them, to see how much fouling they could get away with. Absolutely. And they, and they got away with it and Chelsea allowed themselves to be right up and suddenly, uh, they looked as if, I've never seen it before in Chelsea team, they started to panic. Is it what we're going to well, do now? I think I don't know. I think you have seen it before because I think against not, Manchester City. Against Manchester City, yeah. and you do you do see have seen it a couple of times this season. They do run out of ideas. They run out of and ideas. They run out of quickly. ideas late in games quite a bit, and um, this is what leads me. And, and don't don't say it's say it's an overreaction. We we we, do, we thrive on overreaction. <laughs> well, no, no, I, 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 I don't think that's overreaction. It's like, the end of the world. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look crisis. Use the word crisis. It's ripped badge time. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me a ripped badge. That's, right. That's what I want to say. How can you talk about that Manchester Where's... City game? That was a slap bang in the middle of John Terry's inability to keep his bands on and everyone going crazy about that. And it, it affected him as a player because his form was was on its way to go into pieces and, and it actually had an impact. The whole Wayne Bridge circus, Wayne Bridge didn't shake his hand before the game. Torres was playing like a man possessed. There were all sorts of elements and subplots in that game. And I don't think that game, A, was representative of Man City's form because they've, gone, they've continued to be distinctly average since then, drawing with Sunderland in the last minute courtesy of the Adam Johnson goal. And Chelsea have improved since then as well. So uh, I, I think there is a massive round of reaction with Chelsea. Balak, I'd accept, possibly needs to move on. And Nelka maybe, but I wouldn't see too many other players. Bring, bring, it, bring it hard, thirty-one. Yeah, it still scores goals from midfield. Bringing it back to the title race in the weekend. I mean, they now they face a game also on Sunday afternoon after Manchester United play Liverpool. Incidentally, uh, they're away at Blackburn. That game after Tuesday night, whatever you might say about overreaction, now, that game was now taking on even greater significance, Alan. So it's a huge game now for Chelsea against another team who, frankly, are probably going to rough them up and try and Well, they, they definitely will. I mean, Allardyce, Sam Allardyce says that his teams, as he did in, uh, when he was with Bolton, they do play differently depending on who they play. And their tactic against Chelsea will be similar, or probably lack like a little of the finesse of Inter, but their tactics against Chelsea will be very, very similar. I think you can expect to see a lot of high balls and Samba joining the attack quite a lot and that's the way they'll do it and they'll try and rough them up early and try and put them off their stride. The only difference is Ryan Nelson and Chris Samba are not Walter Samuel and Lucio and I think that um, Chelsea are not, Chelsea will know how to deal with that kind of threat. Mm. Uh, You know I I, I take your point what you're trying to say about that the team needs fresh blood but I I just don't accept it. I look at Chelsea and I still see a team that are uh, are vying for the title. They're going great guns there. They're still the red-hot favourites to win the FA Cup. 
I don't think if they win those two trophies, it's going to be that bad a season. They're away. Uh, no. if, now, that's the thing. If they win those two trophies. But if you're Roman Abramovich with all the money you've put into winning the FA Cup, isn't what you're in it for, Steve. I mean, he wants to win the Champions League. Yeah. That, that, that's gone again. Well, they've had four Wait, managers. What? They've had four managers now, haven't they? And, what, and they've won one FA Cup. And Is what's the right? common denominator? Well, are they, are they turning into the Real Madrid of this country then? The exactly. Chelsea and the United? reason, the reason. What, the, why they've struggled is A, because of not giving the managers time. Not because they haven't given man, managers money, but they haven't given those managers time. You go into a club and you've got players of the calibre of Lampard and Terry and, and Essien, and that's the big miss from Wednesday night Essien. Someone with the power and versatility and athleticism of Essien would have been able to cope with the physical threat of Inter Milan. I think what we're all missing here is that Jose Mourinho knows those Chelsea players inside out and he knew exactly the way to wind up Lucio and that's why uh, they managed to be able to, to, to t- get advantage, to take advantage of Chelsea. But I think as far as Chelsea are concerned, and I'm sure Ancelotti being a huge experienced coach that he is, he will know foot on the ball time, there is no need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, we've, we've said that Man United face a crunch game against Liverpool, obviously always a tricky game. Chelsea, tough trip away to Blackburn. Maybe the big winners this weekend could conceivably be Arsenal. They play before the other two. They could be top by the time Man United Liverpool kicks off. I mean, they're at home to West Ham. Steve, do you see any hope for the Hammers in that one? Well, I think if you... I mean, Phil Brown has been sat by Hull because he's in the 90th minute, in the second minute of injury time, well, he's been sat by Hull because he's a fool, let's be honest with you. <laughs> but, he's, but he's been sat by Hull because in the second minute of injury time, having put on a really good performance against Arsenal, his goalkeeper ch- chose to spoon it out to, to Bender rather than turning it round the post. So I would suggest that, you know, Arsenal... I don't know. I mean, they're still the great, fantastic at home, aren't they? But away, I don't know. You know. So I mean, West Ham is a. I think West Ham is a fairly a fairly good game for them. But yeah. I still don't know whether they're going to they're going to last it out. No, we've, we've, they've been caught napping by West Ham before. I really can't see that. And, and oh, we've we've talked before about whether Arsenal can cope with the mental pressure of being favourites. Now everyone's talked about their easier running. They don't play any of the top sort of four or five. Uh, I think Tottenham is the one team they face in the top eight mm. or nine. I mean, Macca, Macca, they've know, got City as well. They've got City as well, sorry, Steve. I mean, people are now beginning to talk to, about them as being potentially favourites. I mean, what, what are your thoughts? Well, it, it's, they're watching everybody else knock it. The, the idea is that they'll watch everybody else knock, it, knock themselves off the, yeah, off the yeah. perch and then carry on winning. I mean, there's no doubt they play the best football of, of, of any team in the Premier League. They're, they're, they're a delight to watch. And, if he, and the difference seems to be that in the last, previously, then the last five or ten minutes they get frustrated. A couple of them have burst into tears. Now it, it seems that you know they've got the they've got the guts and the gumption to carry on playing and perhaps you know get a winner, which they wouldn't otherwise have done a couple of years ago. I think six times this season, Arsenal have come have scored goals in the 90th minute or later to actually rescue points or win in games. And I think there is a steelier edge about them this season. Um, I I I've said for some time I think they'll nick it, uh, and I think they'll beat West Ham. West Ham got a lot of internal problems. That will probably make what, is, what are those more. internal problems? Well, basically, they're undermining, the, in my opinion, and, and from what I understand, the manager's not happy, uh, the, the owners are very hands on, uh, and uh, there's been lots of departures. Ludic Mikolosko, the goalkeeping coach, has left this week. Very, very quiet amid all of the, the hoo ha of the Champions League, uh, but a lot of few people have been unhappy to see him go. He was a long, long standing mm. servant for the club. And there was just a general air behind the scenes of discontentment about this whole cost-cutting exercise at West Ham. Um, they'll be safe from relegation. I think they've done just enough. There are three worst teams in the Premier League, but there, there is trouble ahead for West Ham. And they've I think got. I mean, they've brought in. You talk about McCloskey going, and they've brought in Kevin Hitchcock. That's haven't they? right. Or they're about to bring in Kevin Hitchcock, who obviously is a mate of Zola's mm. and a mate of Clark's from. Chelsea connections, but yeah. also also has been working. He works everywhere with Mark, Mark Hughes, Hughes, doesn't Absolutely. he? Who is the who's the who's the man? So Absolutely. who's the man that everyone says that Sullivan and, and Gold want at the end of the season or, or whenever? So hey, you so know. you are gonna you, even though Franco is gonna kiss him on both cheeks and um, <laughs> and uh, welcome him. There is there's got to be something in the back of his mind there. Well, Darren Just, thinks West Ham will be safe from relegation. Let's have a look at the bottom of the table. Steve mentioned. Hull a couple of minutes ago there, new manager Ian Dowie, his first game in charge, he's away to Portsmouth, I mean with the 
nine point penalty for administration this week, they're they're doomed, aren't they? I mean, Maka apparently, you know, Dowie's going to get a million pound if he keeps them up. He reckons he needs four wins in the remaining nine games to do that. He's got to get one of them at Fratton Park this week, hasn't he? Yeah, you'd think so. And yet, Portsmouth, especially when they play at home, there is a, you know, with the fans, there's a lot of passion about the fans and they resent what's happened to their club. And I think that, you know, the, some of the P- Portsmouth performances have actually been pretty good. I mean, they beat Liverpool 2 0, don't they? And I know it's Liverpool aren't the team they were, but it's still Liverpool. And I think, you know, if Hull think they're going to get an easy win for a child, I can't see that. I would, I would, I would imagine that would be a draw, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think for one minute it'll be an easy win. Yeah. But, I mean, how much do you think? The, the penalty, the points penalty this week will have knocked the stuff out of Portsmouth. I mean, they have been battling against adversity, but now there's 17 points adrift of safety. Yeah, they're, they're, with basically, nine games to go. they're basically relegated. At least they know they're relegated. There's no sort of false hope and there's no nervousness now. So you, you could argue that, well, look, we've been relegated. Come on then, let's see, let's try and earn some win bonuses if they're ever going to pay us any money. And you, that that can it can it, it can go that way. I, I think that you know that's a dangerous game for Hull City. The Hull City absolutely have to win that game. And if they don't win, if they don't win. And they'll look there in almost as much trouble as Portsmouth. So you're all suggesting there could be a happy finish for Avram Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Not as happy as some he's <laughs> apparently, but <laughs> well, before we really tie ourselves in knots, uh, let's look at let's look at the bottom of the table and let's assume that Portsmouth Portsmouth are uh, are going down. Um, some some it makes it so easy. <laughs> Sunderland have picked up you know points in last couple, so it's. Do we think it's, it's two from five? Hull, Burnley, Wolves, West Ham, Wigan, Darren? I think Hull are going to lose at Portsmouth. And they, I've seen them many times this season. Portsmouth play really well at Fratton Park. They've been very unlucky this season. But I think Portsmouth will go down. Hull will go with them. And I think Burnley will as well because they can't win away and now they can't win at home. They're pretty full Burnley, yeah. And there's, you know, and then there's talk. I don't know how long he's had the job for Brian Laws, but now, now he's he's on the way out, isn't he? Exactly. He's only just got there. It's fantastic, isn't it? And they've obviously Could moved. Could get the Burnley job? <laughs> Well, they've, they've moved to strongly deny it, which means he's definitely going to go. Well, presumably his rating, which is the reason they got him in the first place, is success and uh, success with uh, struggling teams. Presumably his rating has gone down over the last few weeks, so he's not now yeah. at, at the level that the owners want. So, yeah, <laughs> I think I think Burnley and Hull. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe Ian Dow has been sacked by the last three managers, well, the last three clubs he's managed. And, and yeah, Adam Pearson says he was my number one choice. Yeah, absolutely. Best yeah. man for the job. I think he should job. have gone for Mourinho. Surely he'd have a better choice. Well, he? exactly. Well, they were very ambitious. They went for Mark Hughes. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. you, yeah. even Abraham Grant turned the job down. Can can I, say I, can I, As we've said I, before, this it's harder to get off that managerial merry-go-round than it is to get on it, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> can, Steve, I say, sorry. can I say, Ian, Dow- oh, Ian Dowie is... Um, I think he's one. Of, he's one of the nicest football people I've, I've ever met, and I, we, I actually, we actually met him on a Sunday afternoon in Canary Wharf when he was managing Charlton, and we went for a um, an afternoon break uh, and to uh, do some high intensity scouting of whatever football match was on, and he was sat at a bar in the pub, and uh, and I, oh, that's quite strange, you know. What are you doing here? And uh, and he went, oh, I've just moved into a flat in. Canary Wharf, and um, but my Sky's not been installed, so I'm going to watch the game here because we're playing them next week. It was Chelsea or something <laughs> like that. So, so he, he struck up a conversation with us, and um, he was a great fellow. He's really intelligent bloke, but he was magnificently indiscreet. This bloke, this player's no good. I've got to get rid of him. Uh, this referee is, uh, you know, I can't stand this bloke. I hate this bloke. This manager's got it in for me, but I've, I'll, I've, I've hit. I've had a punch up with this bloke already. Absolutely. Marvellous. And then about 70 minutes, after about 70 minutes of this, he turned around and went, so lads, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so I wish him all the best. Exactly. I wonder, I wonder if he compiled a dossier on that one. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, pubs of, of, the pubs all counting, the pubs of all. I tell you, on the back of John Cross's story about the bloke's wig got blowing off at the train station two weeks ago, that's a... Belting story. Right, well, I've got all three of your. Predi- I was no, sorry, Steve. We didn't do. Who do you? Th- no, the three. The three. The three, are, the the three th- are in there now. So all three of you are yes. in agreement. Yeah. The bottom three are gone. Um, so finally, before we end this week, let's just have predictions for the for the title winners. Darren, you've nailed your cards to Arsenal's master ready, yeah? Yes, I have for a long time. I believe they're going to win, and I'll, uh, John Cross is going to buy me a meal when they do. Macca, Chelsea. Steve. Been saying Chelsea all season, but now really got the feeling for United. 
<laughs> oh, there you go, Will it? The final word, the City fan with a feeling for United. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll be back next week with more from the Mirror Football podcast team.